Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing all right tonight, Thursday night, live stream, Jason with Green Acres Pest Control, nice to see, see if I can move that a little bit, there we go, hope everybody's doing all right tonight, Thursday night, um, so tonight I want to talk about a question that's been brought up quite a bit uh, about me and my YouTube channel. So a lot of people ask me, um, what, why would I do a YouTube channel? So in fact, my uh, uh, in-laws, if you know, think I'm crazy, because here I am on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for five years. I've been in pest control for over 30 years of my life. Uh, I've actually worked pretty much nonstop in pest control since I was 12, but um, off and on since I was six years old. And so people, a lot of people ask me, they're like, hey, why would you do a, you know, a do-it-yourself channel? Why do you have all this information available for people? Um, why do you come online and show people how you do your work when, you know, this is how you make your income, this is your livelihood, this is what you base your business on is pest control. And so that question could be asked of a lot of people, like um, car mechanics, you know, you can go on YouTube and find... Uh, lots of channels on, you know, how to rebuild a motor, um, you know, all these different things. You can find how to, you know, paint pictures, how to, you know, basically anything you want to learn. You can use the internet to figure these things out these days. And pest control is something that I know like the back of my hand. It's something I've done my entire life, uh, you know, how to deal with bugs, how to uh, mix pesticides, how to um, what the behavior of a different bug is, like from ants to roaches to bed bugs, silverfish, you know, centipedes, you name it, I've had to deal with it. Um, <clears throat> and then, so what happened was five years ago, I came home from a, uh, a failed heat treatment that I had to go behind a guy and, and fix. And if you watched my latest video, at least I think it was my latest video, um, uh, well, no, not my latest video, not Tuesday's video, but last Tuesday's video on uh, bed bug heat treatment 2021 update. Um, I actually show my very first video I ever posted to YouTube at the very beginning. It's like a little short clip about uh, bed bug heat treatments. And um, that, that YouTube video is uh, what spurned my entire YouTube here, whatever you see that's, that's going on right now. Um, and that video's got almost 200,000 views now. It's uh, not exactly sure how many views it's got without actually looking at it. But the point is, is that there was a demand for do-it-yourself channels on YouTube. Um, when my wife approached me, when I told her this story about this heat treatment, now I had to go behind this guy and I had to fix this. And this is not the first time this has happened. This was just like a $3,500 job that the guy was charged and then three, four days later, when he still had bed bugs, the other company was going to come in behind him and charge him another two grand to basically do the job right or maybe do the job again and, and maybe just take him for another $2,000. But the point is, is that she's like, look, you need to do a YouTube channel. You need to tell people these stories. You need to. It's very entertaining to me. I like hearing you tell the stories. And I think there are other people around the globe that would benefit from you explaining to them how you do your job, um, whether it's, you know, videos of you doing things or just just sit there and tell people uh, facts and, and evidence and, 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 you know, bug behavior and all the different things that I know because I've been in the industry my entire life. I'm 39. That's 33 years uh, since I first, since my very first pest control job. I was six years old. So, um, so I was like, okay, so I made a YouTube channel and here I am on YouTube uh, five years later and I've got almost, let's see, almost, f I've got 13,000, 13.6 thousand subscribers. It's not a lot, not a big, huge, I'm not PewDiePie. You know I mean, I'm just, I'm just an exterminator in Bedford County, Virginia. Um, but, uh, which by the way, you should, you know, go over here. Right here and subscribe hit subscribe and uh 
And yeah, if you haven't already, you should, because I've got a lot of interesting information here. And so when I looked on YouTube and I searched, because when my wife approached me, I'm like, there's no way I could ever do YouTube. I'm not going to get on camera and talk to thousands of people every day about bugs. No one wants to see that. Um, and she's like, oh, no, people do. People do want to see what you have to say. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go. I know someone else is doing it. Let me go look. And every single avenue that I looked at, uh, I looked up bed bugs. I looked up uh, cockroaches. I looked up silverfish. I looked up uh, centipedes, millipedes, all kinds of videos. This was five years ago. I could not find anyone that was actually providing decent solutions for the do-it-yourself pest control person. Um, whether it's a man or a woman or who, I couldn't find anyone giving any advice at all. It was always, look, you can't do it yourself. Hire me. I'm your solution. And the problem with that is that YouTube is a worldwide platform. So here I am in Virginia. I've had people that have come into my chats. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here live every Thursday night. I sit down with you guys. I'm a little late tonight because, you know, the gas and everything and having to wait in line. No, I'm kidding. Actually, it was forever to get into the restaurant with my family. But um, the thing is, is that every single avenue that I looked up, there was no one actually willing to help anyone with their problem. It was always, you can't buy the chemicals I buy or... You can buy the chemicals I buy, but you don't know how to use them. Just hire me. And the problem with that is that I live in Virginia. Sure, I would love to help you all. I would, but I can't. Not legally, not, not, po it's not possible. You know, I can't be in Africa and then the next five minutes be in Australia and 20 minutes later be in Canada. You know, the thing is, I can't be a worldwide exterminator. All I can tell you is what I have done with my life and the things that I have used and the experiences I have had. And if you want to do that, that's up to you. If that's something you want to try, you can, but that's up to you. The only thing I can share is my life experiences. And that's what I'm doing with you here on camera. No one else does that. Um, at least not five years ago, at least not what I could find. I couldn't find them. The YouTube algorithm was not in my favor. I spent two weeks trying to find videos where people were actually helping others. Now, there are channels now like Pest Solutions. That's one that you can go check out on uh, YouTube. They're actually really, really good. They've got lots of really how, how to, uh, they, they sell pesticides and they show you how to use them. I think they're great. Uh, do it yourself pest control has several videos on uh, YouTube where you can go and learn how to do your own pest control and the reason that I want to teach people how to do their own pest control is because the do-it-yourselfer is never gonna hire pest control anyway it doesn't matter how many times they fail they are not gonna hire you because they are a do-it-yourselfer that's the definition of a do-it-yourselfer is someone that is going to figure it out on their own and they are gonna do anything that it takes to do that now, the problem with a do-it-yourselfer in the pest control industry is that they will, um, they will go and buy pesticides. So, I, let, let's here look. So, this is my Amazon page. Okay, this is a page full of products that I recommend for pest control. So, here's tick control right here, chemicals for ticks. Here's bed bug supplies, chemicals for bed bugs. You scroll down, and then there's an ant category for ants and then you've got stink bugs over here because stink bugs are a problem you've got spiders bed bugs in new york and canada so you've got a whole category for new yorkers and canadians because a lot of them watch my channel and they don't know how to get rid of bed bugs and so i've got all these different products cockroaches mice fleas termites all these different chemicals that i recommend because i personally have used these things for bug problems so Anybody can just go and find this information. You can go to do it yourself pest control. You can go to do my own pest control. You can go to these websites and they have pesticides available to you, the general public. These are the same things that I would buy from, say, specialty products or Univar or uh, which specialty used to be Residex. These are the companies that I purchase my pesticides from in my business. The exact same pesticides that I have outside in my vehicle right now, here they are right here on Amazon. You can find them. 
The point is, is being able to find what you need and understanding how to use it. How to use pesticides is important. You need to know how. And how do you do this? Well, you can watch my channel. I'll show you how to do it. Or you can read the label. Now, no one ever reads the label. This is the problem, is that people go and they take the pesticide and they pull out the bottle and they're like, oh, okay, so half ounce to a gallon. Okay, and then they don't read anymore. They don't understand that it's supposed to be used in the cracks and the crevices and the different places that you use it. And that's why I'm here to try to be a more in-depth teacher because not everybody understands reading labels. Not everybody can grasp the labels. Some of the labels are more complex than others. And so people just don't like to read instructions. Exactly. Caleb Williams said people don't like to read instructions. That's exactly right. But you need to because these are poisons. So what spurned this video tonight is I was watching a video. Now, I've argued back and forth with my wife whether or not I wanted to show this on stream, and I don't think I will. Um, maybe I will. I don't know. I, I could. I've got it up here. I don't know if I will or not. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, embarrass the guy and talk about him on, on my channel. But I have a pest control technician that made a video. And basically, well, here, let's just watch it. I'll go ahead and watch it. Let's, let's do this, and I'll mute my mic so you guys can hear. After all, you can go to Wally World, get some bug juice, and hose the house down all to your heart's content. You'll save money and acquire a sense of accomplishment against Mother Nature. Go to your spouse and rave about your ability to protect the family. Then a week later, guess who's back? Now, this is the problem with this video. Is that in the beginning of this video, this is, this is something that I disagree with this approach. So, when you approach a do-it-yourselfer and you come off as a smartass... That, that's a problem because, for one, you write out, belittle the do-it-yourselfer. Um, not every do-it-yourselfer is a Wally World do-it-yourselfer. Um, there are actually chemicals that are good at Walmart that actually work really well for pest control. Um, for example, granular, granular pesticide. So if you buy pesticides from Residex or Univar, like I was saying before, um, those chemicals are the exact same concentration, the exact same pesticide as what you'd buy at Walmart. You can buy a granular pesticide, treat your yard for mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, very effective, extremely effective. In fact, when people locally call me and they ask me, hey, what do I use in my yard for ticks or fleas? I tell them, I say, oh, well, you can go to Walmart, you can use granules, you can do a yard treatment, you can pay me to come out and do a yard treatment, I can do that, but there's... Why would you pay me to do some, I mean, pay me hundreds of dollars, which I don't mind. I absolutely will do that. Um, I'm a spray jockey too, by the way, Caleb. I, I, I am. But the point is, is that the, the pesticides that you use in your yard, you can buy at Walmart, and they're actually very effective. Now, there are chemicals that are very effective at Walmart, say Bayer Home Advanced. Bear Home Advanced, the active ingredient in Bear Home Advanced is bifenthrin. Bifenthrin is an extremely good pesticide. It's the same active ingredient that's in Talstar. It's a very cheap pesticide, but it is a highly repellent pesticide to things like spiders, ants, crickets, superfish, all kinds of bugs like that around the exterior of your home. It's very, very effective. If you treat around the exterior home with a bifenthrin type pesticide, oh no, he is, JM. He is. Watch. Let's watch the rest. So because you're the protector and provider of your family, you already know what to do. You go grab your spray and go to town on little buggers again. You've won. Conquered your demon bugs. For now. Now I know, I know, there's already several of you already yelling at the screen going, did I use this and I got rid of them and I got this and I got rid of them. Check the other links in the description and we can argue about that there. I say most people's perspective about what is required is the problem here. So many times when I quote a price for pest control, I hear the same thing. 
Well, that's less than what I've spent, and I still had to call somebody. Yep. It may be a shock to you, but Wally World does not have the pesticide market cornered. But they do make a killing. Pun intended. Selling the stuff over and over and over and over and over and over to you. Not because it doesn't kill the bugs, but because you don't know how to use it. You don't understand what it is designed to do, what it can do, what it can't do. Now, tell the truth. You didn't even read the instructions, did you? No. Did you know that the law requires you to read the label and follow it exactly? You're not. Now, that's actually true. So, <clears throat> the label does require, the law does require that you follow the label. The label is the law. And I say that, and in fact, let's see, see, look at here. The label is the law. All of my closing screens, my setup screen, all that, the label is the law. The label is the law. The label is the law. No one follows, follows the label. In fact, I know a lot of pest control uh, technicians that don't follow the label. They go against the label all the time. and don't even realize they're going against the label, but they are. Um, but the point of this video and the reason I have a problem with this video is the he doesn't offer a solution. All right, so if you go, and I'm, I'm not going to go through and watch the whole the whole entire thing. But if you go through and watch the video, basically at the very end, in fact, let, let's just skip to the end because I'll, I'll explain to you why I have a problem with the video. So if we go here, if it will play for me, let's see if it will buffer and play because when I stream, I don't have the best internet capabilities. <laughs> um, but And it may not, it may not play because I'm streaming. But the point is, is that at the end of the video, he goes through this entire video and he talks about how the label is really important and all these different things. But then he, he basically says, when you fail, because you're going to fail, call me and I'll come out there and I'll take care of your bug problem. Okay, so where are you, JM? Where do you live? Uh, Caleb, where do you live? Sethi's World, where do you live? All right, do you guys live in Knoxville, Tennessee? Because if you do, oh yeah, he can come to your house. But if you don't, he can't help you. But here he is on YouTube talking like he can come and magically appear in Georgia or Florida or Texas or, you know, Virginia. Right here. Will he come help me? Probably not. The point is, is that he's not providing a solution to the problem. All he's doing is criticizing you for screwing up. And that I have a problem with. So when, when you do YouTube... And you get up there and you spend eight, eight, eight and a half minutes belittling, making your client feel like a loser because they made the wrong choice, which everybody says. You know, basically, most people go to Walmart and they buy pesticides because Bob down the street said, I use this and it worked. Or Sally says, I use this for my ants and it worked. You know, people use essential oil for ants and they swear by them and they say, oh, they work, they work, they work. It's a placebo. Yeah, they don't really work that well. They really don't. And they don't last either. And yes, I know I use pesticides. and I try to help people with pesticides. But like I said, I help people use pesticides correctly so they can be effective. And so when these videos like this crop up, it's basically all, look, we know what to do. We're the only ones that can solve your problem. You need to call us when you have a problem. And this is exactly what I was finding five years ago, and it's still all over YouTube. Basically, it's just, if you have a problem, you need to call me because you won't solve it unless you call me. And I'm the guy that says, um, you will solve your problem. And when you don't, you can call me. But more than likely, you will. Because if you follow my directions, you'll do it exactly the way I do it. You will get rid of your problems because I don't have callbacks. Very rarely do I have a callback. Um, four or five times every six or seven months, maybe, I don't get very many callbacks. Not even 1% do I get callbacks because I do the job right. And it's important to educate your customers. I feel like education is important. 
and it doesn't take very long. If you're standing there talking to your customer and they're having a problem with fleas, okay, and you're going to treat, this is a good example. Fleas are a really good example because a lot of people don't understand how fleas hatch. They don't understand much of anything about fleas. All they think is if they spray chemical all over the floor, they'll kill their problem, and they don't. So fleas have a up to a 21, two to three week life cycle in their cocoon phase. So a flea goes through metamorphosis, much like a butterfly. When the flea uh, hatches out of its cocoon, it hatches out of its cocoon and jumps towards you to bite you to lay more eggs and jumps to bite you to get the blood meal. It needs a blood meal to lay eggs. So uh, they don't hatch out of their cocoon unless you walk by. So what a lot of people will do is they'll go in their house and they'll spray pesticide all over the floor, all right, labeled for fleas. So they'll follow the directions exactly to the T and they'll spray all their floor. I know people have told me this and they and I'm like, well, what did you do? Oh, we retreated the whole floor. We did exactly like the label said. And yet they still have fleas. Why is that? Because they shouldn't. And one of the main reasons is one lady I talked to, she went and treated her whole floor for fleas, and then she went on vacation for two weeks because she didn't want to get eaten up with fleas and figured when she got back from vacation, all the fleas would be dead. But that's not what happens because the fleas will not hatch out unless someone walks through the room, agitates those cocoons, and makes them hatch out. So what I tell people to do is after you treat your house for fleas, let the chemical dry and go through and vacuum the floors once or twice a day because the vacuum will aggravate the, the cocoons. It won't harm the pesticide because once pesticide is dry, you have to vigorously clean it up to get it up. Um, and then you just go through and vacuum and the fleas will hatch. They'll jump towards the vacuum cleaner and usually within three weeks, all the fleas are dead. 21 days is all it takes from the day you treat until the last day, 21 days. And if you tell your customer that, and your customer understands that it takes 21 days for all the fleas to die, they'll call you at like day 18 or 19 because it's getting to them. And they're like, oh, there's still fleas in here. And you're like, well, I can come and I can spray again. But if you give it two or three more days, just wait a couple more days. You've waited this long. And then they call you back on day 22 or 23. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. The fleas are all gone, just like you said. And so... That's where it's important to educate your customers. And it doesn't take that long. It took me, what, less than five minutes to tell you that. So, um, JM, so, so anyway, I just wanted to tell you why I started my YouTube channel. I just thought it was an interesting story. I get people that ask me this all the time that ask me, you know, why did you start YouTube? Why are you doing YouTube? Why are you giving away all this free information? People jump on me all the time on my channel. Like, why are you telling people not to use diatomaceous earth? Oh, you're just trying to cut. You're just, they're just taking a cut out of your business. Well, no, not really, because I'm on YouTube. Nobody's buying anything from me on YouTube. <laughs> so, all right. So anyway, if you have any questions at all about pest control, here I am. I've been kind of communicating with a few chatters tonight. Um, I don't have my uh, Skype open. Let me go ahead and open that just in case anyone wants to call in tonight. It is live. It is a live question and answer show. So if you want to call in, feel free to do so. Um, so if anybody did try to call during that like first 25 minutes, I'm sorry about that. I don't have my phone open quite yet, but it is open now if anybody wants to call in. But um, let's see. So JM, hey brother, I'm in Cardine, New Jersey. I have a pest control business. But I can honestly appreciate you and what you do as well. Well, thank you, JM. Uh, Cameron says, PCO here, education is very important. That flea story is on point. I've had that same scenario happen as well. Uh, Caleb said, but explain IGR. Yeah, well, see, I, since I started using, you know, IGRs, I believe wholeheartedly that IGRs are going to disappear. I don't think dis IGRs are going to be something people are even going to use in the industry in the next 10 years. Um, the pesticides are so advanced that I don't think you need IGRs anymore. With pesticides like Samari and Crossfire and uh, Alpine WSG, neonicotinoids, I believe, are going to completely eliminate IGRs from, from the scene. Because, I mean, Nygard is okay. It works really well. I use Nygard as an IGR for both fleas and cockroaches, but... Most I find most of the time I don't even use it at all. It's just it's it's not something you really need to do. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not deleting any comments, Dan. I don't know. People are pulling your own comments out because you can actually go through and delete your own comment if you want, but I'm not actually deleting comments. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, I think IGRs are going to disappear. I just, they're not, they are not viable for bed bugs. I know a lot of people believe Gentrol is, but it's not. But, um, you know, with the transference effect with what most pesticides now have, you're killing cockroaches, you're killing ants, you're killing uh, fleas, you're killing all kinds of bugs that used to would take a couple of months or, you know, longer to get rid of. But because of the transfer effect, they're transferring it before they can develop an immunity to it. And so it's working extremely well. I think the transference pesticides are actually really, really, really effective. Um, more so than even IGRs. I hardly ever use an IGR anymore. Um, Victoria says, does Max Force Carpenter Ant Gel Bait really work? Gel baits really don't work all that much at all. You need to do a pesticide and a bait application both. Um, if you're going to do bait, you know, but I use, I've started using Samari, which I'm going to do a product review on Samari uh, after a couple months. I want to, I've only had it for about a month and I want to give it at least, you know, 60 to 90 days before I decide to do a review. But um, Samari is amazing. Samari is really good. Um, and Samari makes a bait too. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a MGK product, just like Crossfire. But um, they're supposedly the next best thing to ant control. Um so Andre says, hey, Jason, always good to see you. Could you speak a bit about eliminating mosquitoes around the exterior of a house near a ravine? I've never done anything near a ravine. We don't really have ravines here in Virginia. But I can tell you some tricks about eliminating mosquitoes around the house. Um, of course, the obvious thing is getting rid of any standing water and, you know, old tires and stuff like that. Um, tipping over any bird baths and things where the mosquitoes are, are reproducing. But also, you want to treat underbrush. Um, so, like if you've got uh, boxwoods or uh, holly bushes or you know trees growing up next to the house, try to convince the customer to kind of trim that stuff away. Get lots of air to breathe around those, uh, you know, bushes and things and shrubbery. Um, treat the eaves, overhangs, soffits all around the house, places that mosquitoes like to roost. Um, and like I said, underbrush in different places where they like to roost up underneath the leaves. You want to make sure you get under there really well. And that'll that'll eliminate your uh, roosting places for mosquitoes, and it helps a whole lot. But um, I've heard a lot of people use Intacare. I've never used Intacare for mosquitoes, but, uh, you know, you could let me know what you think about that. I've never used it. Um, William said, how do you get rid of bed bugs? Crossfire. So I've got lots of information on bed bugs. This is what a lot of people know me for. And look at that big pimple right there. I just noticed I got, man, I got a shiner, don't I? Um, so <laughs> I say these things because it embarrasses me when I realize I got a, I got a real big pimple on my nose. Um, so anyway, let's go here. Let me show you. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which you're already here, and you go to vid you go to search right here. If you go to my YouTube channel, of course, you hit the subscribe button and like this video if you're here. I don't know. There's 19 people in the chat now. Go and like me. Like like, like it. Like it. It helps. But anyway, you go to my channel and search uh, bed bugs. Let's search bed bug. All right. So I recommend, let's see, the video you should watch. Um, shoot. Let's try this. I got so many on bed bugs. Let's just try... Select all. All right. Let's try searching extensive. E X T E N S I V E. There it is. So this is a video I did uh, a while back. It's let me see. When did I upload this? February twelfth, twenty eighteen. Three years ago, over three years ago. But let me share this and copy the link, and I'll post it in the chat. That's my video on how to get rid of bed bugs. I use Crossfire in that video that's what i recommend um but yeah deanna did say why are you deleting comments but i'm not actually not deleting any comments at all uh, people are able to retract their comments the only comments i delete from my chat are rude comments pornographic material links things like that i don't allow on my channel and so if i see things like that if people can't you know at least i mean we're all civil here we're adults we could chat here and we could talk here like adults if you can't talk like an adult, you don't need to talk here. 
And so I do, you know, stop people from doing that. I don't like that. Um, so Thomas says, what's your best recommendation for bed bugs? Oh, Crossfire. I just said that. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized you asked. Uh, JM said, being thorough is key in the pest control business. It's easy to get a bad rep. You need to go above and beyond to retain a customer. Um, that's I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I am 24 hours. So it's funny because um, I'm actually a 24-hour pest control company, and you see the company. You are looking at it, the whole company, right in front of you. I don't have any body working for me except just me and my son, who is only 16. So we work together. Uh, calls come in at all hours of the day, including all hours of the night. And when a call comes in, I go out and I do it. And I am not 20. And I tell all of my customers, I am not 24 hours for myself. I am 24 hours only for the customer. Customer service is key. Customer service is the most important. Customer service does not exist in the world anymore. And I am trying to change that with the way that I run my business. So um, when my customers call me, I go out to their house. You know, I take care of their problem, even if it's in the middle of the night. I don't even charge extra for nighttime visits. It's the same price whether they call me during the day or whether they call me at night. I'm there. And here I am on, you know, I'm here sitting at a desk at 10.30 at night. I have to be up tomorrow at 6 a.m., ready to do the next day. I got a couple of termite jobs I need to do tomorrow. Plus, I'm going camping tomorrow. So tomorrow night, I'm not getting any sleep. But <laughs> we're going on a camping trip. It's supposed to be 44 degrees at night. I'm not looking forward to it. It's going to be freezing cold. But the whole family wants to go. The kids are dying to go camping, so I'm taking them camping. And we camp old school in a tent, middle of nowhere, roughing it. Yep, that's what I'm doing tomorrow. So, um... But here I am at night. I'm here on YouTube with all of you to talk with me just to help help you just because I like my job. My job is not a job. Uh, my job is my life. I love my job. Um, but anyway, enough about that. What are your thoughts? Cameron says, what are your thoughts on some of these all uh, new all natural pesticides, nitricide, etc.? In the past, I'd say it was a waste. It is a waste. It is a waste. There are better things. The only reason people go with all natural pesticides is for PR. Honestly, they they're just yeah, and a loose label. You know, I, I've got like Samari has no signal word. It's actually uh, Crossfire has no signal word. They're both extremely non toxic to mammals, and uh, they couldn't really release uh, reach mortality in. Uh, in fact, with Samari, I don't think they could reach mortality at all. They couldn't kill mammals to get the LD50 value. And so um, there are some very safe pesticides that aren't considered natural. But yeah, natural pesticides are crap. I hate natural pesticides. I, I've, I've used some of them. They are typically some kind of a cedarwood oil, uh, tea tree oil, peppermint oil, cinnamon oil, olive oil, just a bunch of oily crap. It's just, it makes smears and stains and it's gross and I hate it. And when you're spraying it, it makes you feel like you're going to snot out of every hole in your body. It's the most miserable crap. And you're telling your customers, it's, it's not going to, no, it's, it's safe. I promise. And it's just, it's just like, oh, I can't, I can't stand that crap. I can't stand it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> um, so let's see. And that, there's my overacting for the day. I hope I win an Oscar for that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's a fair price to charge for a bed bug treatment? Um, it really just depends on your location. You know, you got to look at your cost of living. You got to look at your cost of supplies. You got to look at your insurance. Um, I mean, there are lots of things that go into pricing termites. There's lots of things that go into pricing bed bugs. Um, how much work are you willing to do for the price? You know, the thing is... I'm a very inexpensive bed bug exterminator. I've been doing it for 22 years. Bed bugs, I've, I've only been doing 22 years because bed bugs haven't been a problem except within the last 22 years, at least for me. But it's something that I've, I mean, I've changed my pricing over the years. I've gone up and I've come down and I've, I've, I've done three months I've required for 90 days. And then as I started using Crossfire, I only do like a one time now, um, which is, of course, it's cheaper. 
but it so I'm not making as much money, you know, but then I'm not having to go out to the house three times in a row either. So there's lots that go into actually pricing a bed bug job. Some people just want more money to do them. There is a high risk with bed bugs. Um, you know, you, you always run the risk with every single bed bug job you do of walking through bed bugs and bringing them home and having your wife hit you with a frying pan because you brought bed bugs into your home. And that's always a risk that you take with bed bugs. And some people just would rather get paid more to take that risk. It, it, for those of you in chat tonight that have had bed bugs, you know how horrible they are. And no one, not even pest control technicians, want them in their house. Even if they can spray for them and kill them, no one wants them. They're a miserable thing to have. So, but yes, Cameron says it depends on the type of treatment, and it does. But the only type of treatment that I do for bed bugs is a liquid spray application. Um, I'm using Crossfire right now. If it ever stops working, I'll probably switch to Apprehend. But I do not do heat treatments. I do not do freeze treatments. I do not do gimmicks. I'm not a gimmick exterminator. I deal with real world, real life experiences, what really, really works. And I have a really, really high success rate with liquid. I always have. And if you're willing to go and do the backbreaking labor that's required of you to get rid of the bed bugs, then that's what you need to do. That's going to be the most effective, more effective than heat treatments, more effective than um, maybe not more effective than Vicane. Vicane is probably the most effective way at getting rid of bed bugs because it is a gas, but it is also extremely toxic and can kill people and pets. In fact, uh, I actually have a video that's going live next Tuesday on how to control bed bugs for Canadians because it's something I've been needing to do for a very long time and I have done the video, I have got the video and I am releasing it Tuesday next week. I just need to get my final edits in and then it, it will go live Tuesday for Canadians and New Yorkers, mostly Canadians because for those of you in chat tonight, it seems like every single Thursday night I have Canadians in my stream asking me how to deal with bed bugs. So I have solutions. I go over the top three options you have living in Canada. So hopefully that will help you guys. So look forward to that. Stay tuned for that. And um, hopefully that'll help my Canadian audience. May not get a lot of hits. It doesn't matter. I don't care about count for video count. <laughs> it's just about what, I have, what people ask for. So if you have a weird question that you may think is not important enough for pest control or you think I won't do, you're wrong, I will. My majority of my audience on YouTube for my analytics is from the United States and I'm making a Canadian video. So hopefully that will help any Canadians out with pest control for bed bugs. It is not what you think, but it is a very good video. So I'm not going to tell you anymore. I just leave that breadcrumbs. I like to just dot the breadcrumbs because you got to watch the videos. I want people to watch my videos because I want to get out right here. See right here in this little blank spot on my wall right there. I want to put a YouTube plaque. But in order to get that YouTube plaque right there, I have to have 100,000 subscribers. That is my goal. I want 100,000 subscribers on YouTube so I can get that little silver plaque to go right there. So, or bronze, or whatever color it is. I don't know what the color is for 100,000. So, stay tuned for that one. I hope it will help. I really do. So, let's see. A steam and insecticide treatment. Um, let's see. Sethi's World. Do you think bed bugs will evolve to be bigger and more resistant? If they do... They need to get John Goodman still alive, right? Yeah. He needs to play the bed, the exterminator in that movie. Bed bugs. Is there even a phobia for bed bugs? Now I have to find out because arachnophobia was hilarious. Bed bug phobia. Is there a word for it? I don't know. Well, that's something you guys can look up and let me know. Is there a word for bed bug phobia? Or is it just bed bug phobia? Like arachnophobia? I don't know. Um, do you think bed bugs will evolve? Okay, I already answered that and I'm not sure. Um, what do you use for a termite maintenance? I've already had an underground treatment with Terminex. All right, so underground treatment, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Did you have like a Fipronil, like Termidor? What did you, what did you have treated with? 
Um, underground treatment could be lots of different pesticides. Um, but typically a termite maintenance contract is a, it's, it's, it's like a, um, it's a percentage. The way that I figure my termite warranties is I base it on a percentage of what it would cost to retreat the house in 10 years. The re so it's basically 10%. So if you do a job and the job costs $1,600, 10% of $1,600 is $160. So 160 would be your annual renewal once a year. You pay 160 By 10 years, you've paid to retreat the house a second time. And usually by 10 to 16 years with Termidor, typically it's 16 years, but sometimes you have to retreat before the 16 year is up. Like if there's a problem with drainage or, you know, there's lots of different things that can cause a termiticide to break down. Maybe the termiticide just didn't bond with the soil as well as it does in other compositions. And so uh, you may need to retreat the house before then. But the, the retreat cost is figured into the maintenance fee. That's a, that's a warranty fee to keep the... Because no one pays for termite insurance. That's our job. Our job is to make sure that the termites are dead, that they continue to stay dead, and that's what you pay your warranty fee for, because you will ultimately have to retreat your house. Um, I know that people treat their house for termites thinking this is final, I'll never have another termite again, but that's actually not true. Termiticides don't last forever. Whatever attracted your house to the termites in the first place will attract more termites in the future. As soon as a termiticide is gone, they absolutely will be back. It's it's completely normal. It's, it's just what attracted them in the first place. And so um, what I usually recommend is at keeping your warranty for at least four or five years. And if, you know, as just to make sure they're all gone, just to make sure there wasn't anything missed, um, because it's possible we're all human, humans make mistakes, and it is possible to miss a spot. And it's cheaper to keep your warranty for a few years and then, uh, you know, get that retreat when you need it but then, you know, you can always cancel your warranty and wait, you know, 10 years or so down the line and see if you need to get a retreat then. Um, the thing that you get with a warranty, though, is that somebody's actually coming out to your house every year and actually checking. A professional is checking to make sure that there aren't any active termites. And you're going to get more. That's one of the things that you get for your warranty is that you get a professional actually looking at your house. And you're not just trying to find it yourself. But termites are not hard to find honestly, unless you've got a finished basement or a way that they can hide behind like a stucco wall or something like that, then you'd only know if they swarmed out in the house. So, or you found like dunk, dirt tunnels or something like that. Um, Sethi's World said, I had a liquid treatment and a heat treatment a few days ago. I see bed bugs to this day and they are almost dead, but still move. Can I touch it? And it, like I can touch it and it won't run away, but it'll just sit and die on touch. Yeah, they're dying from the chemical. They're dying from the chemical residue that's left behind. Uh, Mary M says, I called a company where the owner says he has some university science degree and is an expert. Uh, $200 to have a look, but won't quote me until he comes. I think around $1,000. i am in Canada. Uh, yes, help Canadians. Our company suck <laughs> in and out in 15 minutes. Well, I'm in and out in 15 minutes. Um, if I go in and do a pest control, typically it only takes me between 10 and 20 minutes. I'm, uh, you know, I'm pretty quick, but I've been doing this for my whole life. In fact, honestly, I can remember when I was little, um, carrying a BNG, a BNG is a one gallon sprayer and a gallon of water weighs eight pounds and the sprayer weighs about two, maybe three pounds, you know, empty. And so that's eight, nine, 10, 11, like 11, 12 pounds, give or take. Um, that's how much a BNG full weighs. And I can remember when I was like 10, carrying that thing around and learning how to spray. And oh man, my arms would be so tired at the end of the day because, you know, my dad, he was one to, to line up 20, 30 stops in one day and because it was two of us, so I could do the outside, he could do the inside, and we could be done with a house in maybe five, ten minutes or, or less, sometimes less than ten minutes. We were done because he only had to do the inside and I was doing the outside, so it was it was really quick. 
Um, which mostly the inside is just talking and filling out the paperwork. It's not really a lot of treatment unless you have problems with ants around the bathtub or, you know, rats or mice or roaches or something like that. But, um, but yeah, I can remember I was, I was so sore and I had the granule bucket from doing like granules and stuff all over the yard. And it was, oh man, it, it wear you out as a kid, but I grew up and here I am, I'm doing it. And now I got my kids doing it. My, my son goes with me. In fact, my daughter went with me today. She's eight. Uh, that's how old uh, my son was when he started with me. He was eight years old, so she she loves to exterminate. It's so funny because you don't you don't get that a lot from girls. You know, girls not to be stereotypical or anything, but girls don't typically become exterminators. But it's really cool when they do, and she's really interested in it. She thinks it's great, you know. But I joke with my wife. So for those that don't that don't know, I'm having a baby boy and another baby boy. I've got my my youngest is two and a half. My daughter's eight. My son is sixteen. And uh, we've got another boy that's going to be born in October. And my wife jokes, she says, we're raising a, a, an army of exterminators because everybody likes to kill bugs. <laughs> um, Set These World says, what if I see eggs and baby by die, bugs but die on the touch? Well, if the bugs are dying, they're dying. Um, you've got to give them time to die. So here's the thing about bugs and pesticide. All right, when you spray a bug, psh, dead. Bug's dead. All right. It dies because it's on contact with wet pesticide. And typically, most pesticides kill on contact, which means when you spray it, they die. Usually within just a few minutes, sometimes even just a few seconds. Um, the problem is that when you spray a residue, so the chemical is designed to have a residue, a residual effect. So the residue that's left behind will kill the bug when the bug crawls through it. But the bug does not die instantly. It dies over time. So when it's dry, it may take 20, 30 minutes. It may take two, four hours to die. So if it's taking two to four hours for a bug to die, are you really going to sit there and be like, for like four hours and just sit and just, just watch? four hours, eight hours. Some bugs take eight hours. No one does that. People will call me and they'll say, you were just at my house last week and the ants aren't dying. And I'm thinking, okay, are you sitting there and watching an ant for eight straight hours? Because a lot of the new pesticides on the market work through, like I was saying earlier, they work through transference which means they're not designed to kill the bug right away. Now, if you spray it on them when it's wet, sure, it'll kill them. But after it's dry, it's actually designed to work through transference. So let me give you an example. If I go to the bathroom and I don't wash my hands, I'm gross. But also, if I shake your hand when I come out of the bathroom, I transfer what's on my hand to your hand. That's transference. When ants crawl through Samari or Alpine WSG or even Temperid, they pick it up because it's a neonicotinoid. Neonicotinoids transfer between bugs. And so when they go and they communicate with other bugs, it transfers from one bug to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and it knocks down the whole domino effect. So your bugs aren't supposed to die right away. They actually go and communicate with other bugs, transferring the chemical. Crossfire works in the exact same way with bed bugs. So if a bed bug crawls through the chemical, goes back to the box spring, clusters up with a whole bunch more bed bugs, it's transferring the chemical from itself to those bugs. And then that starts the timer all over again from the beginning. So for those bugs. So they're not going to die right away. In fact, it may even take them longer to die through the transfer effect than it did for the bug that actually crawled through the residue. And so they'll act sick, they'll act kind of wonky, crazy, before they die because it's affecting their nervous system, breaking down the nervous system, causing them to die. And that's why you get this weird kind of, this period where the drug, the, the, the bug acts all like drunk and like weird, you know, because they're dying from the pesticide. But yeah, but it's a lot like a bug's disease. It's, it's a lot like giving them a disease without actually giving them a disease, you know, because you're, it's really a chemical effect. It's really a transfer effect with pesticides, but it is very similar to biological warfare on bugs. So 
And that's the way I've always explained these transference pesticides because it's easier to explain it to somebody who isn't in pest control regularly, who deals with like transfer and, uh, you know, cholinesterase and all the different words and the stuff that we use in the field is basically it's like you're giving them a sickness and they don't have an antidote for it. And so the more they come into contact with, the more bugs that get sick. But not only that, if those bugs get into the, they don't even get into pesticide, but they've transferred it from the one to the other, that new bug can then transfer it to the next one, which can then transfer it to the next one, which can then transfer it to the next one. And these are newer, it's a newer idea around pesticides ever since Termidor came out, because that's kind of how Termidor works for termites, is that the termites don't know the chemicals there. They crawl through it. They take it back to the king and queen of the colony because termites only have the two, the king and queen, um, just the one male and the one female reproductive. And if they can get that chemical all the way back and it just rubs off through through the chain of command all the way back, they all end up dying and the entire colony's dead. And that's really effective. That's the most effective way to get rid of any insect is through non-repellent, transfer effect it is extremely effective pest control has changed so much so much because i mean when i was six seven years old i was crawling under houses using chloridane which is a carcinogen last 50 years kills termites for a really long time is a really good pesticide but you know it, it's not the best thing for your health uh durisban diazinon they're organophosphates they are petrol. They have petroleum distillates in them, much like an oil-based paint. They stink. They build up in the system over time. You can get sick. Um, and then you had uh, synthetic pyrethroids, which like demon and bifenthrin, and we still have those today. They're actually extremely safe. A lot of them are still uh, petroleum derived. They still have petroleum in them, but they're very, very much safer than than the, than the predecessors. But then now you've got neonicotinoids, and, and they're very, very safe for mammals. And in fact, a lot of them in these SDS, because I always read the SDSs. I'm a nerd. I like to read. I like to know what I'm using. I like to know what I'm exposing myself to every day. Um, and that's another thing, too, with pest control that you pay for when you, when you have pest control come out to your house. So like I said, I, I ripped on that guy on that video a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I really... I really am. I just thought he was kind of condescending, and I didn't like it. I don't like condescending attitudes. I think it's better to treat everyone on an equal plane, and if they don't understand, explain it to them so they do. That's how I am. But one thing that you do get, so the difference between doing your own pest control and hiring a professional, and this is real, real talk, is that when you buy pest control from a pest control business, like Green Acres Pest Control or, you know, Phoenix out in Tennessee, Knoxville, or, you know, some of these other companies that exist, you're also getting insurance because we have to be insured to be able to treat your home. And if we poison your dog, sue the pants off of us. Take us for all we can. Take us for all you can. You deserve it. If we poison your child, put us in prison. That's your job. That's what you get. You get that kind of protection. But if you go out and you spray pesticides in your own house, and you make your cat or your dog sick. Well, who do you have to blame for that? There's only one person that you can blame for that, and that's you. You can't blame the pest control technician because you didn't hire one. You can't come back and say, hey, you know, you went out, you came out here, and you put rat poison, and you killed my dog. You need to take care of this. My dog is my, that's my family pet. I love my dog. My children played with that dog every day. They're crying themselves to sleep every night because you killed the dog with rat poison because you didn't hire a professional. And so that is something that you do get from hiring a professional that I will absolutely admit. If you don't feel confident in your ability, like I said, I've got these scenes. You know, I set these up just to show you that, you know, we're talking serious stuff. These are pesticides. These are rodenticides. These are toxic things that do kill other living things. You need to treat them with respect. And if you don't feel comfortable 
and you don't feel like you have the ability, you need to try to save up and hire somebody that can do it, that will do it right. Most of us do. Most of us do. Um, a lot of the problems with Canada, so Mary chimed in and said that she had two, I'm just assuming she, uh, Mary's typically a girl name, but had two Canadian old school spray powder treatments just over two months ago. I saw one nymph in the living room the other day. Would you say the two treatments didn't work? Well, if you saw a nymph the other day, well, no, it didn't. Um, depending on how long your last treatment was, it probably need to do another. Um, but there are some things I'll admit on channel now is that Canadians do have a difference in pesticides. Uh, you don't have the same pesticides we have here in Virginia uh, or the United States, period. You, you don't get a lot of the same chemicals we get. So it's, it's harder to tell you what's going to actually be successful at getting rid of the bed bugs. Um, apprehend is really good. I would go with Apprehend. If, if you can get somebody who's using Apprehend, use Apprehend. Apprehend is a 90-day residual. It's what I would probably switch to if Crossfire stopped working. I, I, I recommend it. I recommend Apprehend. I'm quoting the video that I'm complaining about. I didn't say everything he said was wrong. I said he went about the wrong way saying it. The problem is, is that when you condescending, when you're condescending and you're talking bad to your, to your customers and you're, you're treating them like they're a moron because they're a do-it-yourselfer and they're a moron, that is not a good way to treat people. It's not true. They're just trying to kill their bugs. They're frustrated and they're just trying to get rid of their bugs and they probably can't afford you. You know, one of the reasons they're not hiring you is because they can't afford you. And there's no reason to treat them poorly because they can't afford you. Tell them how to fix their problem and, you know, let them do it themselves. There's nothing wrong with teaching someone how to do something. You know, I teach my children how to cook. You know, I teach my children how to clean. I teach my children how to make their bed, how to do their schoolwork because we homeschool our children. I teach my kids how to, ho how, to, how, to do, how to read, how to write, how to do math. You know, there's nothing wrong with educating people. That's, that's fine. Don't sit there on your high horse and say, when you can't do it, just come to me. Keep my name handy and come to me and I'll do it for you. That's not fixing the problem. What you do is you say, this is how it's done. Let me help you so you can learn. Then when you can't do it, you may need to hire a professional. But try it. This is how it's done correctly. The problem with the pest control industry, the problem with the pest control industry is that no one's willing to give anybody advice on their problem. Honest advice. All of them say, call me, I've got the spider stuff. Call me, I got the ant stuff. There is safety in hiring pest control. There's hate safety in hiring uh, carpentry work. I mean, yeah, you can do your own carpentry. You can build your own house. But you can also hire someone that knows all the codes. You can hire someone that knows how to plumb. You can hire someone that knows how to be an electrician. Or you can try it yourself and burn your house down. Or do it correctly. You know, the thing is, if you know how to do it, you can do it correctly. Electricity, electrician's work is actually not that hard. But the thing is, is that you, there's nothing wrong with education. Education is a good thing. And not every single person can, can afford pest control. Why would you let somebody live with a bed bug problem? Why would you let somebody live with a cockroach problem that can't afford a pest control? I lived in the projects. Nine years ago, I lived in the projects. I know what it's like to not have anything, and there is no way in hell that I could have afforded a pest control technician to come in my house and spray my house. I had to feed my children. I could not afford pest control for the $30, $90, $100, $120, $195. $100, that's a lot of food that you can put in your children's bellies and clothes on their back. And so that's, where, that's the way it is. That's who I appeal to. That's who I talk to. When I sit here, I have people call me and they tell me, they cry on the phone and they say, thank you so much for teaching me how to do this because I, I haven't been able to sleep in two years. 
you know, those are the people this guy sits back and laughs at because they can't take care of their problem. And that's not fair and that's not right. It's not the right way to be and I, I, I don't like it. And I'm going to admit that I don't like it because I don't like it. And there's nothing wrong with it saying that. <laughs> that's absolutely true. <laughs> Okay, so Andre says, it's true, Jason. Okay, yeah, that's right. Andre's from Canada. He said, it's true, Jason. We don't have as many chemicals at our disposal, but at the end of the day, being thorough always leads me to victory. That's right. Andre, I would like to know, if you're Canadian, I think you are, I would like to know exactly what you're using and how you're dealing with your bed bug problem because this is something that I would actually like to maybe write a blog about because it's something that I get asked every single day. And if I can send people to you... And they might be able to, you know, talk to you maybe, and you might be able to help them. But, I mean, I've, I've had people contact me from British Columbia. I've had people contact me from Toronto. I've had people co contact me from up near the Arctic Circle. I've had people contact me from all over Canada wanting to know how they can actually get rid of their bed bugs. So... Twin says, I have a nephew in the pest business. His grandparents, something bed bugs from used furniture. Oh, got bed bugs from used furniture? I'm guessing that's what they said. Uh, he did some sort of pull strips. They left the house. Some months later, the bugs were back. Crossfire works. Yeah, crossfire works. The strips you're talking about are probably Niban. I think they're called, is it Niban strips? It's, it's, it's uh, Vapona is what they have in them. Let me see. Um, Vapona strips. Mm, no pest strips. There they are. New van strips. They're probably new van strips. But I don't recommend new van strips because they are toxic gas and they can hurt you. So I don't recommend new van strips. But um. But yeah. So um, somebody here is is talking really good about this guy. What's his name? Phoenix pest control um in chat he's really going to bat for him he says uh he said that you need to look for a professional and all of his videos give the advice you're complaining about not hearing you do realize being a customer he has payment plans and things in line and others can't exactly afford the service uh well no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is oh sorry i gotta get comfortable here sitting here for over an hour makes my back sore um no what what i'm saying is that he is on youtube.com and youtube.com is broadcast in more places than knoxville tennessee and when you get on to youtube.com from knoxville tennessee you are communicating to people from virginia i am in virginia i saw the video there are people all over the world that will see this video that's titled The True Cost of Pest Control, okay? And they will say, oh, The True Cost of Pest Control. Oh, what is this about? Oh, this is about hiring some dude in Knoxville. That's all this is about. This is about how stupid people that go to Wally World, which are his specific words, Wally World, you're a hero because you went to Wally World, and he belittles and degrades his audience. That is the wrong way to treat other human beings. I am pointing out the obvious fact. If you have a problem, if you enjoy degrading other human beings, then maybe I'm not the problem. Maybe you need to look in the mirror because you don't degrade other people. <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't treat people that way. You just don't. It's not professional. It doesn't look good. It makes you look like an ignoramus. It, it makes you look like a jerk that's what you look like and i'm just pointing that out if you behave that way that is what you look like you don't look professional you don't look smart you look like a dumbass that's just the way it is sorry <laughs> that's the way it is i ought to do more of these videos i could pick out of one of these every single week that i watch that gets me pissed off but not just this guy but several other people that i watch every now and then i'm like oh this guy needs to be taken down a few notches he's he's he needs to put a few notches in his belt because he's real puffed up 
Miriam says, I have PTSD. I've slept with the lights on since February. Is this because of the bed bugs? Are you from Canada, Mary? I think you might be from Canada. Andre says, I'm in Ta Toronto, Ontario, and I prefer Demand CS. I cycle with Dragnet. See, now this is exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, Merrick's. Uh, Andre is a pest control technician who lives in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He is pointing out that he prefers to use Demand CS, cycles with Dragnet FC time to time. I've recently started using Tempered for IR activity calls. All right, so he has a solution to the problem. But when you go and you say, I, you're going to have to call me when you fail, you're not really giving a solution to the problem. You pretty much all you've done is said, don't go to Walmart, call me. Don't go to Walmart, call me. But there are alternatives. If you go to here, there's a site. But don't use that site. Let's let's not let, let's not be let's not talk about me. Let's go to um do your own pest control. Let's see. All right, do it yourself pest control. There's one. Do it yourself pest control. There's a place you can go and get the same thing that I buy. So if you go here. You can scroll down. Bed bug control. There's bed bug control option. There is, you know, they've got bedlam. They've got, this is the new van strips. They've got some exa, temperate. They've got all kinds of stuff. They've even got a videos here. Here, So they, you don't have to watch my videos. You can watch some of their videos. The point is, is that there are solutions. No, don't, don't go to Walmart. Don't go to Walmart to get rid of your bug problems. I agree with that. I think that if you're going to do like a yard treatment for ticks or fleas or something like that, yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to do. You can do that. But um, if you're going to do a, a bed bug control, you don't want to go to Walmart for bed bug pesticides. And I actually have a video about this on my channel about Walmart bed bug solutions and how there really isn't a solution at Walmart for bed bugs. Uh, you can't go to Walmart and buy pesticides for bed bugs because most of the bed bugs are immune to the to the pesticides you buy from Walmart. But you can go to Do It Yourself Pest Control. You can buy uh, Crossfire there. You can buy it from Do Your Own Pest Control. They sell Crossfire. Amazon sells Crossfire. You can buy you can buy Crossfire from Walmart.com. Actually, uh, they actually sell it there. And so um, because they they deal with other distributors much like Amazon does. And so. You can get the pesticides you need. The reason I have my channel here is to show you. Now, I do have, so I do have this, this site page right here. That's TikTok. But there, there's my page with all these chemicals. Now, the reason I made this page is because I was asked by somebody. They said, how do I get the pesticides you use? So I made this Amazon page. I get a 3% cut for every pesticide you buy through my page. But you don't have to buy it through my page. You can go down and you can say, oh, there's Crossfire right there. So that's what the bottle looks like because people don't know. If you watch some of my older videos before I started with my better video editing, because um, now I actually will edit the video and I'll put like, where is it right here? I'll put the bottle of Crossfire right there in my new videos. It goes right there and you can see it so you know what it looks like. But in my Amazon page, you know, before when I made my Amazon page, I wasn't doing that kind of editing. I haven't gotten that advanced yet. This is like two or three years ago. And so when you go there, you can click this. You can say, oh, so that's what Crossfire looks like right there. That's what he's been talking about. That's cool. Okay, so let's go over here and let's search Crossfire. Crossfire pesticide at do-it-yourself do pest control. And that, oh, there it is. But see, they've got an aerosol. They sell an aerosol. Well, he said, he said to use this stuff. That's the stuff. So let's go back over here and say, oh, well, oh, there it is. There's the stuff I need. That's what I need right there. That's the bottle I need. So then you know what to buy. So it's a, it's a resource. So you can go and use it. So you've got images that you can say, okay, so that's what I need. Let's go over here and buy it over here. You don't have to buy it from my store. I don't care. Either way, I just want you to get rid of your bugs. Um, Sethi said, I sleep with the lights on as well because of bed bugs. You're not the only one. Bed bugs 
are not afraid of the light. People think they are, but they're not. Cockroaches are afraid of the light, but dead bugs are not. Dead bugs will come out in the light. They are not afraid of the light. So I'm sorry if I made things worse, but they're not. Twin Sparrow says, after Hubs brought the bed bugs home, I thankfully found your channel about Crossfire before we had a real bad problem. We even gave my mother-in-law Crossfire. Bed bugs are all gone. I tell people of this product thanks to you. See, that's what it's about. That's what you do is you tell people, this is how I solve a bed bug problem. If you hire me, this is what I do. So like my, let me show you. So I, I sent this link out earlier to this video right here. Let me cut into right um, here. So you see, I'm showing in this video where, I mean, that's a, oh, I didn't want to add. I'm sorry about that. Let's skip that. All right. So I show in this video how to check on a bed. See, I've got my GoPro out. I filmed this all with a GoPro. But you go in here, see there's a bed bug. See all the dead bed bugs inside the mattress where I sprayed. I actually sprayed this mattress before I showed. See, and then I cut. I got a jump cut to me right here. Kind of talking and stuff. It was a really, it's not the best done video. But the reason I have done it is so I want you to actually see how to treat the beds. Oh, see, I already treated that bed. And then we go in here with the couch. I get, I prep the couch. I flip the couch upside down. I open it up. I treat it inside. And this is what I'm doing. I'm showing you how to use the chemical that I use. But this is a really old, like I said, this is over three-year-old video. It's, it's an old video. But the point is, is that you can do this. And if you do this, you can get rid of bed bugs. And like I said, Twin Sparrow here in chat uh, right out said that they did it themselves. They're not a professional. Uh, they were able to get rid of their problem. And so it's not like this guy in this other video where he's like, um, when you can't do it, just call me. No, nah, I'm more, I know you can do it. You can do it. And if you can't do it, and if you live in Virginia and you want to call me, then I'll do it. But you can do it. I believe it. Uh, you can do it. But you got me. If you need me, call me. You know, that's what I tell people in Virginia. I've got people that call me locally in town and they're like, oh, I can't afford that for bed bugs. And I'm like, well, if you go to my YouTube channel and you watch my videos and you order Crossfire, uh, I've got, how many videos do I have now? I, let's see. I have on my channel, let me see here. Um, YouTube.com slash Green Acres PC. videos will it tell me holy cow i got so many videos it won't tell me it won't tell me how many videos i got in august i would have been on youtube for five years so i have got nearly five years of videos that's a lot. That's a lot of videos. There's a lot of information on my channel about how to kill bugs. From bed bugs, to cockroaches, to silverfish, all kinds. Twin Sparrow says, I told two people about Crossfire. When I told them Crossfire kills the bed bugs, they asked again, what's the name? I'm in Illinois. I can't afford your travel expense. <laughs> I had a lady one time. This is a long time ago. This is probably four years ago. Um... I only had like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I didn't have very many people watching me really much at all. I wasn't doing hardly any live streams like I do now. And she called me and she's from New Zealand. And she had, and I remember this because she had bed bugs. And she called me to, she was really upset. And um, it was three o'clock in the morning because I've always been 24 hours. And so she called because I was 24 hours and she didn't expect to get me on the phone. And I'm like, you know, it's 3 a.m. And she's like, I can't believe it. But, you know, you got somebody that calls you in Virginia from New Zealand. You, you answer the phone and you talk to them. And I, um, 
I don't do a lot of that anymore. You know, people, I've got other ways that people can contact me where I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and talk on the phone um, for my YouTube audience and stuff, which I've got that linked in below. Like, you know, you can actually schedule time to talk to me now where I didn't used to have that before. But um, so if you ever, you know, for anybody here that wants to actually schedule, you know, just one-on-one -on -one with me, uh, I've got, like I said, I got links below that you can do that. But she called me at three o'clock in the morning and I spent like almost two hours on the phone with this lady trying to calm her down just because she had a bed bug problem. And, you know, when you, I don't know, I like to help people. I don't mind. Uh, Mary M just messaged you on another video to ask you to come to Canada at least twice a year. <laughs> where, where, let me see. Let me see that. What's going on here? Let's see, on my incognito windows, I don't actually have myself logged into YouTube, so I can't actually see, you know, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. Green Acres Pest Control, LLC. Can you start making trips to Canada two times a year on one of my other videos an hour ago? Yep, yep, I see that, I see that. But I see every, so I read every single comment that anyone posts on my videos. I am so obsessive compulsive about my video comments um i did have to turn off all comments to all new videos they're not off but they have to be monitored and i don't ha i don't pay anybody to monitor my youtube channel so i actually go in and read every single comment and i approve or disprove the reason i had to start doing this is because once i got to 10,000 subscribers I started getting spam like crazy. I'm getting people coming in with like pornography, links to all kinds of crazy websites and scams. And so I had to go through and and change every single video to where people can't actually um, like just post anything. And so if you ever comment on a video and realize that your comment didn't show up, it's because I haven't read it yet. But I will read it, and I will allow it. As long as it's decent, and it doesn't you know, go against some kind of community standard. I don't want a bunch of cussing and you know, foul language and stuff like that. And there's no sense coming in there and saying, this guy's a damn idiot, you know, like people do. So, I sound like Hank Hill there for a minute. Oh, there, Bobby! <laughs> um, it's late, you could tell. I'm starting to talk weird. Let's see, what time is it? 11, almost 11.30. Shoot, I've been in here like an hour and a half almost. I'm probably going to have to get up here. My wife's probably wondering if I'm ever going to come to bed. Um, so Twin Sparrow says, I gave my sister your YouTube channel link because you're so good. She said her son has cockroaches. Yeah, they'll, they won't let your... If you say cockroach, they won't let your uh, your chat show up because I had to take off foul words and apparently... Cockroach is a bad word. Oh no. But it's 11.30 at night. Don't let your kids see the word cockroach. So, anyway. I got 19 viewers. That's a lot of people tonight. If, uh, if you think about it, um, subscribe, comment. Or, uh, let's see here. What's it say? I've got 18 people watching. I've only got 14 likes. I only have two dislikes. Only two. After that rant and rave about that one guy, I only got two dislikes. Come on now. That's 16. So that's 16 interactions. I got 19 people watching. I can't get three more. You could thumbs me down if you want to. <laughs> Interaction is interaction, honestly. The way YouTube is, whether you thumbs me up or whether you thumbs me down, it's still an interaction. So it's good for the channel either way. But anyway, I am going to have to get off of here. I have got to go to bed. I am exhausted. I have been up this week. Every single morning, I have been up before 6 o'clock. This morning, I got up at 5.30. And I have worked, yesterday I worked a 14-hour day. 
The day before that, I worked 16 hours, all in preparation for my camping trip tomorrow, so I don't have to work tomorrow afternoon. So, if you guys like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. I say that on every one of my videos. Um, follow me. Live stream every Thursday night. I do have a video, hopefully, as long as I can get the edits and everything finished. It is going to go live Tuesday. Bedbug Control in Canada. The top three, three different solutions for bedbugs in Canada. So stay tuned for that. Also, it will help with uh, New Yorkers too. Because New Yorkers have a lot of the same restrictions that they do in Canada. A lot of New Yorkers can't get Crossfire, can't get Alpine, can't get a lot of the chemicals that we can get in Virginia. And so it's a video catered to both New Yorkers and Canadians, but mostly Canadians and what you can do to eliminate bed bugs. So you guys are great. I appreciate my channel. appreciate everybody sitting in here listening to me run my yapper all night. And now it's an hour and a half long. I got to get to bed. So y'all have a great night. I appreciate it. And uh, also that video is good for technicians too. So the one coming Tuesday is good for Canadian technicians that are looking for solutions to get rid of the bed bug problem in Canada. So it's good for everybody. It's good for people, techs, all around Tuesday. Um, usually my videos go live Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. unless I do a premiere which the premieres always go live at night when I can sit and chat with you at the same time. But it's not going to be a premiere. It's just a, like a 12-minute long video that you guys can watch. So y'all have a good one. Bye.